Hey, my name is David Wiggins, and my presentation is a survey of knowledge management tools and concepts that will help facilitate the transfer of small projects between teams. Um, I want to start off with a couple of, of the base concepts of knowledge management. Basically, if you're on a team where you're just starting um, the project or, or you're working on it and you want to document all of your information, you're doing a push strategy. A push strategy is where you're actively managing the knowledge, pushing it into a repository so that it can be uh, easily searched and managed in the future by future teams, clients, repositories, what have you. The, the opposite of that is a pull strategy. It's kind of the, the you're doing an ad hoc uh, knowledge seeking. Uh, say you just joined a team and you don't know anything about the project or the domain, you're going to be looking in uh, existing documentation maybe that may or may not be part of the, the team's documentation. Maybe you're just looking online or going to the experts asking questions. This is a pull strategy, and I'll be referring to these terms uh, throughout the presentation. This is an eye chart, and it's meant to be an eye chart. Uh, this is copy and paste off of uh, Wikipedia, just the knowledge management section. The, the reason I throw this in here is to explain that knowledge management is actually a whole area of study. And there are a whole bunch of strategies, a whole bunch of tools, a whole bunch of little sub areas of study in this, uh, under, under this subject. And today I'm just going to give a brief overview of a couple of things. But there's a ton that can be read about this topic if you so desire. So how does uh, CS577 do it? Uh, right now we've got a repository our, being our, our team website. We have a standardized format for docs being the, the uh, MS Word templates that we use. We're graded on these so we're incentivized to actually do a good job on the documentation. And then uh, furthermore we've got re review boards with our stakeholders and our teammates in order to make sure that they're good quality and also to make sure that there's no holes. Why have I been thinking about this? Personally, I started up a, a prototype project at work a couple of months ago, and an interesting thing happened there. We were working on the prototype, and it, and, uh, it was a limited scope, but at one point, management came back and said, we're going to have a lull where everybody's going to leave and go work on other efforts, and then probably we're going to come back and do this for real, like on contract and large scale. And so we need to be able to take all that we've learned during the prototype and document it and uh, be able to uh, either maybe it'll be yourselves coming back or other team, uh, other people, other developers, but we need to make sure that we don't let all this knowledge go to waste. So we started thinking about it then. Then I started on 577A and I was on Team 7. We were working on a project that was meant to go for two semesters. It didn't because everybody else went and got internships over the summer, but uh, uh, we spent a lot of time thinking about how can we push our information into these documents. Uh, in 577B, like I said, my uh, old team didn't continue, but I got put on another team, and, and all of a sudden I'm on this team of seven people, and most of us ha weren't on this team before, so we're all kind of, a lot of us are in the dark, starting from scratch, don't know what we're doing, don't understand the client, don't understand the vision of the project, and we spent a lot of time doing a lot of pulling of information, talking to the clients, talking to the peop the experts or the people that were on the project previously. So at work, when I started on this project, I, I figured, well, I'll just send out an email and find out what my coworkers know about it. And I got some great responses. Well, this is a quote that I got out of one of the emails that came back to me that I thought was great. Uh, he says, I think the key to transferring a project from one team to another is documentation. Requirements, design decisions, and rationale, design do documents, meeting notes, commented code, etc. As much as process is a pain, that's one of the reasons we have it. And uh, he's one of our senior developers on uh, the project I'm on right now. But immediately after I got that email from across the hall, uh, a buddy of mine says, "No, you're not supposed to document. You're, you can't share all your information with other people. You got to be indispensable." It's job security. Look out for yourself. If you're the only one that knows how to do something on a project, then they can't get rid of you. So immediately we have this clash here with management. We have uh, our, our customers saying we want this project to continue, but at the same time, people want to keep their jobs. So you got to manage your culture. 
Another concept is uh, whether or not, or how do you make, uh, incentivize or make it mandatory or whatever you do, you got to get people to put their information into your system or strategy or however you've decided to manage your knowledge. I personally like the reward system, and one, uh, one great example that I found, stackoverflow.com, uh, they have rankings and sort of achievements, and the idea is that the, the more that you put into the system, the higher the rank and you get, and then it's public, and so you have bragging rights. Is there any monetary reward? No. Are they paying more? No. All they did is just give you something that said, you know, a, a gold star but it makes people feel good and uh, incentivizes them to do more, to put more information into the system. Here's a uh, real quick things to document. These are just a few suggestions. It'll vary from project to project, but requirements, designs, decisions, meeting notes, uh, commented code, mock-ups. Think about anything that you would need if you were coming back completely from scratch and joining the project. What would that person need in order to pick up and start working? So I want to go through a couple of, of tools that you might use, and this is not certainly not a comprehensive list, but the idea is that here's a few examples that you can start with. You can compare these with uh, other tools that you've used or might consider using, and also consider kind of the level of how much you want to invest into this tool. This first one is Atlassian. They have a whole suite of tools for collaboration, project tracking, uh, bug tracking, the whole deal, but it's not free. You do get technical support and it's got a ton of functionality, but do you want to go to that level? They're at Atlassian.com. Uh, another option might be to have a wiki somewhere. Wikispaces.com is a, a product that uh, t my team this uh, semester has been using. It's nice. It's, you get rich content. It's a, it's a wiki. So you can put up your uh, documents and information all in one place. Just a simple repository. But it's also free. Lastly, I'm, these are two, uh, two products that I've used to take uh, screencasts of my code or uh, processes or things that I've done at work. Chem Studio is an open source product. That's what I'm using right now. It's free. It's uh, easy, fairly easy to use, easy to, to learn. It doesn't give you a lot of editing capability. On the left, I've got Camtasia Studio, which is the uh, COTS off the shelf product. It's got all the effects and cool features that you'd ever want. You get your tech support, etc. Uh, the drawbacks to doing this. I already talked about some of the good things that come from it, uh, but the drawbacks are that it takes time to do these videos. Memory usage, because video is large, and also requires a webcam or a mic. Um, so you've got to equip everybody that's doing these videos with that hardware. Here are my references. In closing, I just want to say that uh, most of these references are just to the uh, the products, but if you look at these products and, and then look at other products that you find through Googling or just searching, or asking around, then you can look and see there are uh, pros and cons to each of these, and some of the, uh, these products might suit your, pro your project better than others, be it your budget that's limiting you, or maybe the learning curve. Also, consider the, the concepts that I've gone over, push and pull strategies, incentivizing and, and, and getting people to buy off on your strategy is really important. Otherwise, you can put all this time and effort into learning or implementing a a repository for your information, but it will never get used. So that said, I want to leave you with uh, this closing statement that uh, knowledge management is really important, and uh, sometimes uh, simply just you know a word doc just doesn't cover it. You got there's a lot of things that can that you can do to do better. Thank you for your time.